Have you heard the saying, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow? I'm going to explain to you what that means in the life of a light worker and so much more. Stay tuned. dark side of being a light worker. Hmm. So listen, light workers, way shores, empaths, indigos, highly sensitive people, you are born to bring the darkness to the light. And many of us are born into families, systems, have careers, relationships that are dark, that have a narcissistic system, that are part of the need we have in this world for change, for healing, for growth, for unity. And your mission is to learn to align, line up with that inner guidance, that self-trust that gets broken for so many of us as children, that self-trust, that self-love and that integrity so strongly that you can be what we need to change. You can be the light and you can highlight with strong boundaries and you can be there unconditionally and you can be a strong vessel of light for others. There are a lot of pitfalls, a lot of things that we have to deal with in this process. And obviously I only ever talk about what I've experienced and what I deal with with others on a regular basis through my work. So as highly sensitive people, a lot of us think that highly sensitive or empathic means weak, means you can't handle things, mean you're, means you're the one sitting in the corner somewhere. It couldn't be more far from the reality. The reality is you are born seeking truth, feeling truth, embodying truth, telling the truth. And that gets you a bad rap a lot of the time because you are not willing to stand around and allow things that aren't truthful to happen. You are not going to sit there in a family that's dysfunctional and be quiet about the dysfunction. And what happens, unfortunately, because you are so sensitive and you're feeling the truth in your situation, you don't want to maybe, but you do. What happens is you will be the scapegoat at work, in your family, wherever it is, in the relationship, you will be the scapegoat, targeted as the scapegoat a lot of the time because you are the sensitive one and you are the non-conforming one. You are the strong-willed person who is not going to allow people to get away with the shit they want to get away with. So instead, they project their stuff onto you and make you the problem so they don't have to own it. That is one of the biggest darknesses in the lives of light workers is that we are targeted because we don't yet know our own worth, our own alignment, our own mission as a light worker. So here's what we can do, you guys. First, it's important to recognize your patterns right now. Are you someone that is energetically sensitive and maybe energetically codependent where people come to you, feel better when they come to you because they dump all their stuff on you and you take it on as your own? See, one of the things that light workers do is we will turn it inward. All this darkness, all this stuff going on that we wish wasn't going on, that we can feel is going on, whether people tell us or admit it or not, you can feel it. We take it on as our own, as a false sense of control. If we can be certain of something, we can transmute something, we can change something about ourselves so that this doesn't happen or they don't feel this way, we're going to do it, but we suffer. The other thing is we might attract some narcissistic type people or emotionally inept type people because again, we can handle it. We take it on. We can feel into them. They feel a connection. It's this, it's that, but you take it on so that they don't have to take responsibility. Bad. Darkness number two. And the third thing that we do is we start to blame ourselves. We blame ourselves because we're not yet in a space of alignment, of boundaries, of self-love. 
So we blame ourselves for all these feels that we're feeling because we somehow feel, which all children feel, that whatever's happening around me is because of me. Darkness number three, time to let go of that and own your truth. So boundaries, babies, this is what we need. When we are in such a state of feeling and we don't have the boundary, we start to break down. We're not able to be what we came here to be. We're not able to be the empowered healers. We're not able to be the focused empaths. But instead, we give away all of our boundaries and we start feeling like shit. We can't do our work in the world. So this is what we're going to do. We get rid of the darkness by first doing our own shadow work. We all know that, right? Getting real about what you feel so that you can heal. That is my number one saying because it was my path to self-love. It was my path to self-trust. It was myself to owning and living my truth. And this is what I teach all day long because I'm so obsessed with it because it's so life-changing and amazing. And it's not about you, by the way. It's about the whole picture. When you are able to be honest and live in alignment with your own authentic needs and your own authentic feelings, what happens is you then naturally start creating this boundary about what's yours and what you can deal with and what you'll take on and what's theirs and what you won't. And one of the second, hi baby, most important things, first of all, it's being real about how you feel so you can heal. The second really important thing to do is to stop giving a shit about whatever other people think. So many empaths put other people's feelings and opinions of them over their own alignment with what feels right and good for them. And what you'll notice is you cannot hone your own power if you are giving it away to others. So you have to, number two, stop giving a shit about what other people think about you. And when they come to you and you're not taking their stuff on anymore and they're mad because you're not allowing them to feel that unconscious lift, that's too bad. Because what you're doing is you're, in a way, projecting responsibility back to where it belongs. You're allowing them the experience to own their own light by allowing them to have to see their own darkness. If you keep taking it from them, they're never going to have to see it and love it and accept it back to wholeness. Here's the thing. What is darkness? Darkness is all those parts of yourself that you have deemed or society has deemed or your parent has deemed or your teacher has deemed or someone that you look up to has deemed as not good enough, unacceptable, not lovable, not okay. And you've taken those parts of yourselves and you put them in the dark, in the shadow, because you don't want to look at them. You won't own them as your light. So they are in the dark. And what you do when half yourself is in the dark is you create a false self so that you can function in the world. But as someone who did that, like most people do, it's extremely unfulfilling. It's very needy and unfun. And it feels like shit, basically. So what you do most times, light workers, and hopefully people who are tuned in, get to the point where that's not working. I just want to be me. I just want to be whole. I just have looked everywhere for that wholeness and realized it's right where I left it in my shadow. And so what you do is you start having the courage to look in that little stash, that dark corner that you've put everything in and taking it out one by one and saying, wait, what do I think about that? Do I believe what I've heard? Do I believe what they said? Do I believe an out-of-date system that needs to upgrade? Do I believe a perfectionistic societal ideal that's crazy? Do I believe a measure that someone made up? Or do I believe that source, God, whoever, the universe, made me exactly the way I was supposed to be? And to be able to feel that wholeness that I was created from, I need to take those things out of the darkness and own them as light. And as soon as we look at those things and love them, they become us again because you are love and you are light. And what happens is your empowerment, the power from within, The enlightenment, the light from within, starts to be what you live as. And when you do that, because you have the self-awareness, the boundaries, and the forgiveness, and the unity, and the love within yourself, you start being the example and engendering that within others. It's okay for them to talk about the stuff that they've been ashamed about. It's okay for them to let you know about this part of themselves that they don't really like. It's okay to talk about the truth that happened to them in their family when they were a kid 
or what happened to them in school. And it makes other people understand that they can live unconditionally, that there's nothing to be ashamed of or put in the dark or not speak about. But instead to love and own and be that example for others in this world of unconditionality. You guys know I talk about it all day long because I'm so passionate about it. And because of that, you know, I've built my six-week program below Solab. Check it out. Anyone you know who's going through this needs to own their truth, needs to empower the healer within, wants to understand their purpose on a higher level and feel that unity. You're feeling what everyone's feeling. We're just not talking about it. Go to my link below. Check out Soul Lab. It's aligning with your soul, the oneness within. I think we need this on a bigger level. I feel like we need to spread this work into the world. I feel like it's what everyone's really looking for and not really talking about. So let's do it. I hope you like this video. Please share and subscribe and I will see you soon. Namaste.